Hey, hello everybody, welcome back to Momo vs. MTG. Today's video is more of a discussion on the Commander format and the different play styles that people have. Taking a look at, you know, particular ways people build decks, uh, you know, their archetype in a general sense, and then also, that kind of feeds into the second point I want to talk about, is threat assessment in general. Uh, this is more of a... You know, perspective matters because everyone has different threat, threat assessments. Um, I'll just go through the personal experience of mine and how I view the format. And, you know, when I see a type of deck that sits across from me, what am I thinking off the bat? So without further ado, let's just jump right into this bad boy. So first off, what are the type of players at your table? And this does include you, right? Do you have a Battlecruiser Barry, a Combo Carl, a Precon Perry? A Stax Stanley, a Pillow Fort Phil, maybe a Group Hug Gary, a Mill Miley, or a Voltron Victor. And then there's you, most importantly. What kind of deck are you bringing to the table and interacting with others? Um, I want to take a look at each of these. There are plenty, there's a plethora of different you know, ways to build decks and styles of play. But these are some of the more popular ones, and I want to dive deep into these a little bit. And just uh, bring to light, you know, what you're dealing with and how, you know, people interact with them and what are thoughts on them. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. First off, we have the Battlecruiser Barry. Right there, that's Barry. And this is your board, right? Because Battlecruiser Barry is all about the, you know, slam it, windmill slamming down big creatures, big stompy creatures are going wide with a bunch of tokens. And the important part about Battlecruiser Barry is... Usually, you see the game plan right in front of you, right? If they have one of the most feared creatures in the format, of course, the Colossal Dreadmaw, or a whole bunch of dog tokens, or for instance, Galta Stampede Tyrant, where he slams all his creatures down, is you see this coming from a mile away usually, right? Their board state represents how scary they are in the current game you're playing. Um, and usually, hopefully, they don't have haste right away, but... If they do, you know they're going to be stomping over you and crushing face. Battlecruiser Barry is all about punching face, big stompy creatures, all that good stuff. So if you're a Battlecruiser Barry, pretty cool. Moving on from there, we have Precon Parry, right? So this can range from Parry, just got into Magic, you know, it's a lower powered deck, and of course, Precon Parry, you see what's, you know, you kind of know the Precon maybe in a little sense, so you see what's coming. Um, there's not too much surprise there, um, and yeah, you do like seeing Precon Perry across the table, you'll shake his hand, have a good game, uh, but you know, you, maybe they sub a couple cards here and there, but it's mostly, you know, on the lower end power, you know, unless we're talking about, um, you know, the new Eldrazi Precon, but we don't, we don't talk about that. Precon Perry is pretty cool to see, like to see him. Moving on from there, you have Combo Carl. I believe everyone has a combo Carl in their playgroup, one form or another. You know, there's a thing or two to having a couple combos in a deck, but combo Carl, that's every deck he has. Um, I'll go on a tangent a little bit later, but the thing about combo Carl is he hides his intentions in the game, right? He can win out of nowhere, which is the biggest fear, um, you know, in the commander format, because he's going to win out of nowhere and end the game. Combo Carl could have cards like this in their hand, and you just... You know, he could have, like, you know, compared to Battlecruiser Barry, he doesn't have seven cards that are just going to win the game on the spot, basically. So Combo Carl is definitely one to look out for when you see him sitting across from the table. Moving on from Combo Carl, we have Stack Stanley, right? He's running all the cards, like Aura Silence, Rule of Law, Winter Orb, Back to Basics. He enjoys this. He takes, you know, great pride in it. And usually, most people don't like to see Stack Stanley across from the table because um, often not half the time they don't even have a win con. However, um, it is a way, you know, legitimate way to slow down the game. Um, their idea of more magic is instead of playing maybe three to four games that night over the course of a couple hours, they take three to four one, you know, three to four hours for one game. And that's the idea of more magic to them. Um, but the Stack Stanley could be slowing down the game, hopefully stopping the combo player or something like that, and be able to win in their own fashion. 
And, but this is your experience when you see Stack Stanley across the table half the time. And usually he gets your ire and you send creatures his way and stuff. But moving on from Stack Stanley, not to get confused with Pillow Fort Phil, right? Pillow Fort Phil here loves the idea of sending all the hate that he would receive somewhere else. They run effects like Propaganda, Ghostly Prison, Light Minefield, all these deterrents to say, hey, there's other players in the game. Don't, don't send them my way. So the difference is you're not really taxing your opponent's ability to play and do stuff, but instead you want to set up you know, a deterrent to hopefully push people to attack each other while you get to do your own thing in a little bit safer manner to eventually get your own victory. Uh, Pillow Fort Phil is a little bit better to see across the table usually if you're sitting there because um, you kind of just leave them alone. They leave you alone until stuff happens later on. Very cool. Moving on from Pillow Fort Phil, we have Group Hug Gary. Wow, what a rare species. If you see you have someone in your group who's a Group Hug Gary, you need to cherish this person. They're probably a good person at heart and you'll love to see them. They're that guy you want to bring around, hang out at parties like Group Hug Gary. Love to see them. You know, they're running these commanders that either help you draw, benefit you, and usually they're the last person you want to take out at the table, right? Um, very good for political sense where, you know, Group Hug Gary doesn't get a lot of threat from the rest of the table. Um, but again, you love to see this guy. If he's around, keep him around, right? Moving on from Group Hug Gary, we have Mill Miley. Oof. Oof, what a doozy, right? You see Mill Miley across the table, whether he's milling himself or milling you, more importantly, this gets a lot of attention from the table. Whether or not you need all 100 cards in your deck to win or not, after they mill maybe one of your win cons, um, may say something about the deck building, but I digress. Uh, all seriousness, Mill Miley, uh, enjoys, you know, milling other people's cards or maybe themselves to eventually win through maybe a combo of their own. But, you know, your experience at the table with this might start with some grief, followed by more grief, and lastly, you come to acceptance once your library is gone. Um, yeah, Mill Miley definitely um, really breaks you in um, as a player, I think. But again, sitting down, you see this player across the table, I think a lot of other players do not like to see this, and they're probably going to go after them. Moving on from Mill Milo, we have Voltron Victor, right? It's punch face with Commander. We don't do these combo things. Yeah, but, but, but. You're trying to do old-fashioned, uh, which you don't see nearly as often since, you know, Voltron's a little bit weaker in the format. Um, but you're trying to put equipments, R's, buffing up your big Commander, right? Smashing face. Um, usually, of course, Voltron Victor, you see the known threat. It's the commander, right? And that's going to be coming at your face uh, as many times he has to until you pass away in game. Um, yeah, so remains like a weaker strap. You see the game plan. You know how it works. So usually, you know, you can threat assess this guy is, can he do 21 commander damage to me? How long is it going to take, right? So moving on from Voltron Victor, let's play Who's the Threat Anyways, right? A good game show uh, I thought I'd introduce, so let's see how you guys do. First up, we have Player 1 as Voltron Victor, Player 3 as Group Hug Gary, Player 2 as Battle Cruiser Barry, and then there's you there, Doodle Bob. Um, so you're sitting down at this table, who is the threat here? Is it A... Voltron Victor, B, Group Hug Gary, C, Battle Cruiser Barry, or D, you? Give your second answer, and if you guessed player one, two, and four, you're correct. Um, this is a well balanced table. You know, everyone, you can see your game plans, and basically everyone's gonna leave Group Hug Gary alone while the rest of you go at each other. And again, that's the idea of Group Hug Gary, he lays low. And you have a nice, even assessment of threats, right? Is the Voltron player going to be getting out of hand by buffing his stuff? Or is Battlecruiser Barry throwing down a whole bunch of creatures? And we got to keep, keep up with them. And then whatever your game plan is, right? So a nice assessment of threat here. 
Question number two. Now, change, change the stakes. We have uh, Fultron Victor here, Pillowfort Perry, Battlecruiser Barry, and Combo Carl. Who here is the biggest threat? I'll give you a little bit to answer. Boo -doo -doo. That's right. It's Combo Carl and Pillowfort Perry to a certain degree. Um, I put him there as maybe the lesser threat, but still up there because people don't like pillow forts. And, you know, if something says, hey, you can't attack me or, hey, you can't do this to me, uh, they want to be able to do the thing to you. So they're going to try to, you know, get around that as much as possible. But combo, uh, combo Carlos down here should be the biggest threat because you see the known threats. Voltron Victor, Commander. Battlecruiser Barry, his creature, his board state. Combo Carl, he went out of nowhere. So, moving on from there, third question, let's see how you're doing. Now we have Voltron Victor, 10 cards in hand, a beefy commander. Pillowfort Perry, he's got some enchantments down that says you can attack him. Player number two, Precon Perry, 10 cards in hand, doing well, decent board state. And then there's Combo Carlos, right? Two cards in hand, a little board state. He's trying to deflect, deflect a little bit. Who is the biggest threat? That's right. If you guess combos Carlos and Pillowfort Perry, you're correct again. Um, because as soon as, you know, Precon Perry passes the turn here, Combo Carlos was playing all low, hey, don't hit me with your commander. And those two cards in hand, which you missed, were Kiki Jiki and Fellow Guardian, and you lost the game. That's right. So always take out Combo Carlos here in this scenario. Um, this varies game to game, but Combo Carlos, he's a little bit of a doozy now. Moving on from there, fourth question. Player one, um, Mill Miley's here. Player three, Pillow Fort Perry. Player two, uh, we have Stack Stanley here. And player four, Combo Carlos. At this table, you are the Pillow Fort Perry. Who is the biggest threat? Who should you direct all your ire to, or at least a decent amount to, uh, right off the bat, right? Without any you know, knowledge of the decks they're running, but you know the game style of their decks. Who do you go after? That's right, it's Mill Miley. No one likes Mill, that's a joke. We do like to see Mill. Me, personally, I like to see Mill in the Commander format, don't hate me. Um, but if you're a part of my play group, um, and this is multiple different pods I'm playing with, Mill Miley gets a lot of hate here. She's crying, she's in grief. She's actually the one in grief, not you. Um, most of the players I play with go after Mill Miley, say, hey, I don't like Mill, this stops my stuff. I needed that third rampant growth that's in my graveyard now. It's terrible. And then usually Combo Carlos takes the game from there because Stack Stanley and Pillowfort Perry are, you know, playing with themselves over there. Moving on from there. Uh, same question. Um, and I will show... You know, a little bit example of Combo Carlos in action. This is just from a recent game I had. I think it's fun to use real examples, so let's go with it. Um, player number four, Combo Carlos. So I had a game where I had Gav, Guru of Spores. I knew this guy, Combo Carlos. Usually, most of his decks, there's at least four or five combos, and especially with the commander, that are going to win him the game on the spot if I let it resolve either his commander or the spells that are enhanced. So... Nothing on the table. He gets Gav, Guru Spores out. I'm like, cool. I'll remove it. Remove it, removed it once. Nice. Next turn around. A couple turns down the line. Plays it again. No real board state of such. He's ramping. Gets Gav out again. So cool. I remove it again because I do that. Third time around, I say, hmm, maybe I'll let, uh, maybe I won't hold up interaction this turn. Guru Spores, you resolve. What do you do the following turn? Boom. Guru Spores, Heart and Scale, Shadow of the Spire, Ozolith, Ash Nut Altar, and boom, Infinite Mana, bup, 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 with Bash and Remembrance, and we got drained right out of the game. Um, the other player at the table was, uh, I think he was a Voltron Victor, so he was setting up a pretty scary commander, scary board state, and Combo Carlos, I was really harping on most of the game. I really left Voltron Victor alone. And the one turn I hold up nothing, boom. Combo, bam, bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Shake my hand. And we played another match. So that's just a little, little something for you. Food for thought.
Um, I'd be curious of what you guys think. Um, if you're sitting down at a table, you know, who are you most afraid of? Um, and not afraid of, but like, who are you focusing on? Is it, you know, prejudice from maybe past games or if you know the guy, you know his decks, maybe you focus that. Um, but I'm curious if there's like a type of player um, that you usually go after first. Is it the mill guy? Is it the control guy? Is it the battle cruiser guy? Like who, who has your eye off the bat? That's what I'm really curious about. But just a little little food for thought when it comes to commander format. You know, makes you think about your decks and how other people react to it, what they think about it. And sometimes it's good to ask, hey, hey, what do you think of my deck? Do you think it's you know, am I stacking you out or am I, you know, comboing out more often than not? So, you know, some cool things to think about. So. That's really it I got on the topic. So if you're still here to the end, I appreciate you. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with Momo versus MTG. And until the next one, take care.